Greetings. Nelson Olmsted here. Today, let's follow the man with a little black bag on his rounds in Northern California. Here's Clint Gruber, our genial spokesman for Pacific Power. Welcome once again to Stories of Pacific Powerland, a presentation of Pacific Power and Light, the company that has been serving the electric needs of the region's homes, farms, and industries through more than half a century of progress and growth. Now, let's hear from Nelson Olmsted, Pacific Powerland's favorite storyteller. If the young man who disembarked from a lumber steamer at Crescent City, California in the year 1899 seemed a trifle bewildered and out of place, he had good cause. This was a strange kind of setting, peopled with burly lumberjacks, dock wallopers, and fishermen. And one man said to him, well, You're a doctor, huh? Well, what brings you to town, Doc? Looking for a place to hang out my shingle. I have a hunch this town's going to grow. Besides, I like the looks of the country around here. Well, I reckon folks in Del Norte County get just as sick as anyone else. Well, we can put you to work. So, welcome to Crescent City, Doc. Well, Dr. Ernest M. Fine, fresh out of Cooper's Medical College in San Francisco, soon discovered many things about the practice of medicine that had not been covered in his textbooks. Word might come in from isolated farms, mining, or logging camps about an injury, an illness, or a baby to be delivered. Dr. Fine would pack his medical satchel, saddle his horse, lock the office door, and head for the mountains. He remarked, In medical school, all they taught us was how to take care of the patients. What they should have told us was how to get to them in the first place. I'm going to suggest a few new courses of hiking and snowshoeing and boat rowing. Well, Doc Fine in Del Norte County hit it off beautifully. It was obvious from the start that the doctor had come to Crescent City to stay. He married a local girl. He worked constantly for the betterment of the community. In fact, it was Doc Fine, in partnership with Mr. Bowman, the druggist, who opened Crescent City's first hospital. In those days, no nurses were available in the area, so the two men ran the hospital pretty much by themselves. One time, the doctor had admitted a patient suffering from severely pulled ligaments. Since no proper medication was on hand, Doc Fine handed the man a bottle of horse liniment to ease the injured member. When the doctor returned the next morning, the patient said, Say, uh, Doc, now that stuff you give me was eh, mighty hard to swallow, but I finally got it down. Uh, uh, leg don't feel no better, and now my stomach don't feel so good either. Well, Doc Fine's unorthodox approach to the medical profession endeared him to the people of Del Norte County. And his approach to the material things of life was equally unorthodox. He seldom sent bills for his services. Often a patient would stop by the office and ask, eh, <coughs> What do you, Doc? Hmm? I don't know. Uh, how about a dollar? Hmm. You sure that's enough? Well, what did I do for you anyway? My wife had a baby, you remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, uh, better make it 50, then. <laughs> For 40 years, Dr. Ernest Fine served the community of Crescent City with medicine, common sense, and kindness. After his death in 1939, the grateful citizenry of Del Norte County dedicated a modern bridge across the Smith River on Highway 101 to his memory. At the dedication, one man said, It is a fitting tribute to a wonderful man. The Doc Fine must have forded this river a thousand times to help people in need. So from now on, this will be Doc Fine's bridge, and no one around these parts will ever think of it any other way. <laughs> 